Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video today, I'm going to show you exactly how I built this beautiful vampire crab oasis. The tank is a custom made 100 by 35 by 30 centimeter tank, which is about 105 liters or 23 gallons. However, if you're starting your first vampire crab paludarium, I highly suggest choosing a long tank over a tall tank and probably something a little bit smaller. I suggest something around 10 or 12 gallons to start. I'll leave a tank size guide video in the description if you want to check that out, but for now we'll just move on to building this tank. First thing I like to do when building a new vampire crab paludarium is to set up the main hardscape and the structure first. This is going to divide the water from the land section and form the entire structure for our build. There's a ton of different ways you can do this, I've got a few different videos showing each of them, but for this one we're going to try something completely different. I'm also going to be reusing stuff from my previous build which I just stripped down a couple of days ago so you might recognize some of this stuff as well. We're going to be using the grey stone that I used last time, as well as some of the wood, ferns and moss. My inspiration comes from this small stream that I used to frequent back when I was living in Australia. Here's a few photos I took of this stream, just to give you a bit of an idea of what I'm trying to recreate here. My aim is to replicate this little area in a smaller scale. Generally I prefer to build filterless tanks because I like to keep maintenance to a minimum, but for this to work, I wanted to add a little tiny pump so I could create a waterfall. So I cut a perfect pump shape out of this filter foam, just a square, and I added the pump to the middle of it. This will prevent the pump from vibrating, and the immense amount of filter foam will keep the pump clean from getting clogged up for at least 12 months, probably even longer. However, if you want quick access to your pump so you can perform maintenance, you can just make a little trap door over the section above the pump and place something like a rock over it, just so you can get easy access. I'm also trying something new this time by adding a small basalt gravel layer to the front of the glass just to hide the clay balls. You don't need to do this, but I didn't want to see the ugly clay balls from the front. Alternatively, you could cover the glass with some plastic or some paint, but I wanted to keep it simple and natural, so this leftover basalt gravel is going to work really well. Then we can fill the rest of the land section with some clay balls or lecker. This is going to be the drainage layer and the substrate layer. That's the hardest part of the entire build complete. And also the most important because you want to get your substrate and your structure and your foundation perfect because everything else is going to be built on top of that. The next important part of this build and my least favorite part of any build is to add the soil barrier. It always takes ages to get perfect. It's kind of boring but you really do need to take your time for this process. A lot of regular viewers know that I always use weed matting for this but you can use window screening or anything similar that does the same job. All you need is to prevent the soil from getting into the substrate, but still enough access for the water to get through fine. Soil is the next thing to go into this build. I'm using a cheap organic fern mix that I found here. You can use any soil you like, even dirt straight out of the garden works fine, so long as it isn't compromised with any poisons or fertilizers. I get asked about soil mixes all the time and I can honestly say don't bother with anything fancy unless you have some kind of a fussy plant that you'd like to use. Vampire crabs are pretty basic, they don't need anything special and normal soil seems to be perfect and seems to be a really good way to get them to breed quickly. Before I started anything else in this build I tested to make sure the pump was working. Don't forget to do this early on in the build stage because once you get stuff on top it's a nightmare if you have problems. I added the soil before I done this because with the clay ball layer you're going to have them float to the surface so it's important to make sure you have something keeping them weighted down so they don't float up and you can do the test properly. I've made that mistake in the past and it's a total nightmare. Before planting everything I added a few more rocks to the land area just to make things a little more interesting and to add some more line of sight barriers. The more line of sight barriers and the more complexity you have in your tank the better especially if you have quite a lot of crabs or you plan on having a lot of baby crabs in the tank. Again, I'm keeping the plant selection super simple and super cheap. I'm just using two species of ferns here. I'll leave the names up on the screen. They send out runners quite fast, so we'll fill in a lot of the blank space fairly quickly. However, you will need to direct those runners in the position you want because sometimes they go in every direction. Normally I like to use sand for the water section but this time around I'm using a small grain gravel which is out of the previous tank and already cycled and covered in beneficial bacteria. So this will jump start the nitrogen cycle in this tank. I also decided to add this Amazon sword to the tank. 
It's kind of out of place, but I didn't want to throw it away. It's the only tank that I have available to put it in, so it's going to be featured in this one as well. In go the mosses in the woods scattered around the tank with the aim to give emphasis to the ravine in the center of the tank. The wood is just small pieces of alder root, and the moss is a mix of hypnum moss and fern moss. There's also a little bit of Christmas moss and Java moss attached to the wood from the previous tank, so this is going to grow in nicely as well. Last of all, I'm adding some finishing touches with some Creeping Jenny and some Ficus Pamilla, as well as a stable for the water section, Salvinia. I'll tinker with things a little bit over the next few weeks, but for now, that's the Paladarium basically complete. And as all this stuff is from my previous build that I took down a couple of days ago, it's already bioactive and I can add my crabs straight away. However, if this was a completely new tank, you're going to need to add cleanup crew. Springtails, Earthworms and Isopods are the best three options. And if you've been watching this build so far, you would have noticed quite a lot of these creatures scurrying out of the stuff I've added, so springtails and isopods, as well as a few earthworms in the soil. Once you've added your cleanup crew, I highly suggest waiting about a month before you add your vampire crabs. And remember, only one species of crab per tank. Mixing crabs is a number one no-no. They will fight and they will kill each other. If you haven't liked or commented on this video yet, now's the time because I'm about to start adding the crabs. Just like the old tank, this one's going to be home to my purple crabs, so the Geosasama Denilo crabs, and all of these crabs started from a single pair. Every so often I add a few different males and a few different females, just to keep the genetic lines diverse and to keep any inbreeding problems at a minimum. I also sell them and swap them locally sometimes, just to keep the population changing, and to make room for the babies that are born in the tank, just so they can grow up with their own territories. Unfortunately, I don't sell any crabs online or ship them because they ship really badly. So if you are looking for crabs, try to get them from your local fish store. One more thing I'll mention is if you're starting with vampire crabs, don't start with a lot. Just a couple of crabs is a good way to start because they breed quite easily and you want to have a nice amount of space in your tank for the babies to grow up in. If you have a lot of adult crabs to start, as soon as you have the babies, there's a good chance most of them will be eaten. Unless you separate them and put them straight into their own tank. I don't usually include a maintenance section in my videos, however quite a few people have asked what a maintenance routine looks like in a tank like this one. And to be honest, it's really quite easy. As a tank is created to be a bioactive ecosystem, all I really need to do is about a 20 to 30% water change once every two weeks. In all honesty though, I could probably drag this out to about four weeks. With so much plant density, everything looks after itself, but it only takes about five minutes to do, so I just stick to a two week schedule. Apart from the water changes, the only other thing I've had to do so far in the 82 days this tank's been running is trim the moss. From memory, it's been about twice so far. Again, this probably isn't really necessary, but I just do it anyway because you can use the trimmings to spread the moss wherever you like. At some stage, the ferns will need trimming as well and their runners will need to be cut because they do start to spread quite wildly. That's easily a few months away yet and I plan on letting this tank get really dense. We've already had a couple of generations of babies born in this tank so far and quite a healthy population of mushrooms popping up, which is always super cool to see. I hope you've enjoyed this video and everybody got to learn something. And as always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers everyone.